hello everybody. This is um, Kelly Appleby and welcome to Coffee with Kelly. I'm the mental health lead for the Thames Valley District School Board and I'd like to welcome you back for another episode of Coffee with Kelly. And today I am joined by two wonderful women who I will have um, introduced themselves in a moment. And our topic for today um, is we're going to we're going to have a good conversation around uh, educator well-being and why we need to be talking about educator well-being uh, right now and going forward and why well, it's always been an important topic to talk about but especially now. So um, I am going to ask my guests to um, introduce themselves. So Dora if you'd like to go first. Thank you Kelly. Hello everyone. My name is Dora Chance. Um, I teach grade 8 presently. I've been teaching for about 20 something years and um, very passionate about uh, equity and well being, and I'm very happy to be uh, part of this conversation. Thank you, Kelly. Great. Thanks for joining us, Dora. And Susan? And I'm Susan Roger. I'm a psychologist and a faculty member at uh, Western at the Faculty of Education, where I get to teach our Bachelor of Education students about wellness for themselves and their students. So I'm really excited to be part of this conversation. And it's wonderful to be with you, Dora and Kelly and everyone out there. Great. Thank you to both of you for being here and talking about such an important topic. Um, that that deserves a lot of attention for mm -hmm. sure. And when I when I think about um, the most important uh, job is to shape and teach the minds of the children in our communities and the people that do that, uh, being the educators in our system, and um, they pl play such a critical role in shaping. The, the sort of achievement and well-being of our kids. And so um, it seems really, really uh, natural then to have a conversation about how do we ensure that we are um, that we are also talking about the well-being of the people who are who are taking responsibility um, significantly for the well-being and achievement of kids. So, with that being said, that really shapes our conversation. And so I'm really just interested, and maybe Dora, you could you could share with us uh, first this question of what, like, why is this an important, why is educator well-being an important conversation to have? What are your thoughts on that? I think educator well-being uh, is really important at all times, but especially now, because I just find that everything is so uncertain uh, in terms of not just COVID, but, uh, you know, world events and, and things just seem really uncertain. And as educators, um, we, uh, you know, want to um, sort of always uh, help our students the best way that we can. And, you know, in order to help our students, uh, I think it's really important to, to take care of ourselves and our own well-being um, because, you know, ultimately that's passed along to them um, and through them. And so I think just, you know, taking time to, to, you know, care for ourselves right now is just so important. And, and it's so difficult in this time because these times are so unprecedented and, and um, we just... I don't, I'm not sure that we, we exactly know what to do because things are so uncertain, but it's a topic that, that is so important, uh, that the well-being of, of educators, um, because we, you know, we are the direct lines to the students and they look to us. Uh, and when we're not sure about how we feel or we're not feeling well, um, it, it, it reflects, uh, you know, in, in how we go about doing our 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 business of of uh, you know looking after children and so I think it's part and parcel of of that whole connection our well-being transfers to the students and I appreciate that sense that it really is an inseparable conversation in some ways um and it's like what I hear you saying Dora is that it's 
it really isn't a conversation that we should be separating um, the the educator well-being and the teaching and learning and well-being of of the students that are in that are sitting in the classrooms with the teachers. It's a it's a it's a hand in hand conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so Susan, from your your lens and your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, why should we be talking about this? Well, because I think well-being is critical to both teaching well and learning well, right? So we talk about stress as part of well-being. It's not everything, but having high levels of stress can certainly take a toll on our well-being. And well-being is or stress is very individual. What is stressful for us all? There's some commonalities for sure. Um, work intensification is stressful for everyone. Not having enough resources to do your job is stressful for everyone. There's also some individual parts to it. We learn from our experiences. We learn from the people around us and we, we take comfort in the resources we have. And those things are different for each individual. So it's really important to sort of remember that your stress is, is real and it's important to you, right? And, and the, the, I think one of the reasons why it's so important here is because the research tells us that mm -hmm. the more stressed teachers are, and we often hear the phrase burnout, the more stressed or burned out teachers are, the, the, the negative, the more negative outcomes for their students. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's studies coming out all over the place. Makes me wonder why we didn't really wonder about teacher stress before. Um, if we have to go through this portal of saying, well, it's, it's bad for the students, so we should pay attention to it. Uh, but there is certainly a lot of research that tells us that as teacher stress rises, student stress rises, students' academic achievement and um, engagement uh, reduces. So mm. it's important for all those reasons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, and so, um, you know, not only is it just a good conversation to have for um, just to be well because it's the good thing to do for ourselves, mm -hmm. if, um, if it, if, if it if it's something further than that, that it's actually really good for the kids yeah. that we teach. Like if, if it's in service That's of right. the kids that are being taught. Absolutely. And and as as teachers, people are part of that helping profession where mm -hmm. the values that drive us are to be helpful, to be part of the healthy growth and development of young people, right? Mm -hmm. So in that way, we can look at self-care, um, learning how to cope with our own stress, learning how to reduce our own stress is ultimately mm -hmm. being good, not only for ourselves, but for our students. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering about um, this idea that part of, part of all of this in this time is really and truly an acknowledgement of how hard of how hard this context is right now like in terms of a place to start um, really just acknowledging that there are so many things that are coming at educators that are different and uh, different than what what we've known to be education and there are feelings that are involved in that. There are feelings that are involved in the, all the uncertainty that has occurred in our system. And um, there's something to be said for an acknowledgement of, of that. What do you think about that, Dora? Yeah, to, to piggyback on what Susan said about, you know, that um, connection and, and how there's the connection with the student. I think that that's one of the things that's that's fueling stress levels of educators is because it's very difficult to make that connection with students 
um, because you're not in the classroom. And so, you know, that adds to the stress level, uh, uh, you know, and the well-being of educators because, you know, we know that, um, you know, we have that connection with students, that five minutes even just alone at recess or, you know, in the classroom when you know somebody needs something and, and you've got that established face-to-face and you know um, that now you, you're, you're not with your students and you know that they're experiencing those things and probably more because of this uncertain time. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it adds to, uh, you know, t- um, educator stress because you know that uh, you know that they are having a difficult time or you imagine that they are and you know that there's not a whole lot that you can do. I mean, certainly we reach out, you know, online and things like that, but it's not the same thing. If you can't replicate that, that human dynamic with a, a student that, you know, you have face-to-face in that relationship with. And so, you know, you, you worry. You know, I worry, you know, mm-hmm. at night and in the daytime that, you know, I know that this situation has happened before we left and, and I grapple with, um, you know, that feeling that I really can't do anything or, or something that I feel is effective. And so that, that brings stress to me as well. And so I think perhaps a lot of educators are, are grappling with that, that piece that, you know, there's that human connection that was just severed and, and mm-hmm. we're, we feel kind of crippled by that, that feeling that, mm-hmm. you know, we can't have this face to face. And so I think that adds to a lot of educators, um, you know, load right now. Yeah. And so just as we think about, um, you know, uh, wrapping up, this is our, si- this is our sip of coffee. So this is the little sip of coffee with Kelly and Dora and Susan. Um, and um, we're going to have an extended full cup of coffee conversation beyond this, where we're going to have an opportunity to talk more about, about the difficulties, uh, the, the, the challenges that educators have been faced with, the challenges to educator well-being in this time. Um, or, and we're also going to talk about, so, so all of that's true. And so, so what can, what can we offer? What can we do to support ourselves and each other um, in this time, knowing that this is an ongoing and needs to be an ongoing conversation? Um, so this is, this, is our, this is our sip of coffee. We are going to continue to have this conversation and dive deeper into all of these concepts. Um, and so my hope is that everybody that has listened to this uh, sip of coffee will join us, uh, the three of us, for the extended conversation, um, which will be posted at uh, TVDSB forward slash mental health. And, um, and beyond that, I also want to share with all educators out there, teachers, ECEs, EAs, that beyond this conversation, we're also going to, myself and um, Susan Roger are going to be providing professional learning opportunities uh, that you can join in. And those will be available to sign up for on your employee portal that will um, be running both Wednesday and Friday. Um, and you can sign up for those sessions once you listen to this um, conversation. So thank you to the two of you. Um, and we will continue this very, very critical conversation um, with the extended cup of coffee. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.